Hello ladies, gentlemen, and Gothamites. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down for you guys the latest of Gotham. We are on season one, episode 18, 19? Something. We are flying into the stratosphere <laughs> with this show. The episode is Everyone Has a Cobble Pot or Everybody's Got a Cobble Pot. Either way, skeletons in the closet. So, spoiler alert before we dive into the mad thick of things, as I will be bearing all in this review. And just so you guys know, I think that the show is getting ready to go on like a five week hiatus or something. I watched the preview for the next week's episode, but they're talking April, so... However, this is an okay fact for me because starting next Monday, March 9th, Bates Motel is going to be resuming its um, airing schedule. So season three premiere, March 9th, be there, be square. I'm going to be reviewing that on my channel and then of course Better Call Saul as well. So I definitely, as interesting and fascinating as the show has been, I'm really ready to take a bit of a breather. Or to see, I want to, I mean, I want to see everything conclude. I want to see how they wrap up this ridiculously gargantuanly long season. <laughs> I mean, I, so let's, let's actually get into the meat of this week's episode. So I really enjoyed what they had to offer this time around. I liked last week's episode. I find that, like, lately with the show, there's this pattern of every other week, episode I love, episode I hate, episode I love, episode I hate. But this week we had two pretty good ones in a row. So what I especially liked about this week's is that the brand of weirdness that it delivered by and large was the kind of weirdness that I would crave from this, this show, from the, the Batman Gotham universe. It felt very much... I felt at home because we got to focus more, of course, on the corruption of Gotham, namely in the form of what's going on in the, the government and the GCPD and how everybody is pretty much wrapped around everybody else's finger. And then we have a couple of the big main kingpin mob bosses that um, kind of got the top down power flow going on. So what we got to see here, of course, is that the current commissioner, Commissioner Loeb, is uh, he let the murderer drug dealing Duschenheimer by the name of Arnold Lass go free and that is something that is not sitting okay with Gordon and so he and Harvey Dent actually go about trying to get to the bottom of it and they find out initially that Harvey Bullock was the one who um, withdrew his his testimony that was originally incriminating Lass he took it back Lass is now free, saying that he's going to run for the GCPD union president role, and again, lots of things not sitting super well for Mr. Jimmy James. So he sets he sets about trying to get to the bottom of this whole system in light of the knowledge that Bullock um, imparts about how Loeb has the nitty-gritty dirt on everybody in the GCPD, quite possibly even Jim Gordon himself included, and that all, all of that is bound up with Falcone, and it's basically this hot, steaming crap load of corruption and doom in the land of Gotham. And it feels right. Like, this is the kind of thing that I was expecting the show to focus on more and then it it didn't and it seems like for so long they were just kind of trying to up the the wow factor in terms of the the um serialized weirdness that that jim and bullock got to, to face but i really enjoyed what we got to see this week because you know it's it's more of the same territory we've seen this happening before where jim is questioning everything about who he is and trying to make these strategic choices while standing up for what he thinks is right and good. Whereas Bullock has been in the game for quite some time and he, <laughs> I guess, apparently is the one of the first to let Jim know that everybody does have their cobble pot. That everybody is deeply enmeshed in in a system where information is, is leveraged left and right. And of course, 
he Gordon goes so far as to offer the penguin a no questions asked favor which I think is gonna come back to bite him on his sorry arse later on but anyway um so there was a lot that was going on in the episode but it, it felt it felt very complex and nuanced at its best at its worst well you know you <laughs> you decide what might have pushed you over the edge but for kind of a brief um, overview of what we got to see we started off of course with Alfred in the hospital apparently he is up and at it the day after getting freaking stabbed and arguably almost bleeding out so, like what what did he what was it that he said like that he got poked or punctured and he, like I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was basically like, oh, only a flesh wound kind of a statement, which is precisely what I would expect from from Sir Badass Alfred Pennyworth. That made me very happy. Um, but And I think that perhaps the only time that Bruce has ever given Alfred an order was when he was telling him to get back in bed because Alfred's trying to move too fast. Meanwhile, Bruce has pretty much put all the pieces together that Reggie came after him because of his uh, <laughs> little expose at Wayne Enterprises. Not exactly something that the higher-ups were too keen on, having the young Master B prying into their uh, affairs. So he knows full well that, that they're, well, you know, running scared, but also retaliating in a very dangerous way. And he wants to follow this through to the end, which I'm not sure how that's all going to play out. But Selena shows up in the nick of time and offers her assistance. <laughs> what what a confusing character. She's at a very interesting point in life where there's there's this tenuous friendship bond that has been formed between the cats and the bats, perhaps because their future secret identities rhyme or something or their you know outer hero villain identities rhyme you know perhaps perhaps that's part of it um but so so we see that she extends her services to a friend and bruce insists that he must go forth boldly into the night on his own because nobody else shall be hurt on his account we'll see what comes of that selena tells him that he knows where to find her so i guess there there is that um, and then we, so, things with, with the fish continue to get fishier as we see that she is in the middle of, like, the freaking Arctic Ocean on an Alcatraz island of, of death and despair and the doll maker. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's so funny how so many people are, are incredibly upset at the name of the, the doll maker, doll mocker, you know. That's how all the villains in the original old school Batman universe are. They're all really terrible puns. And it's just something that you kind of learn to accept and cherish over time. And that's really not the kind of hamminess that gets me. Now, I still don't really know. Like, honestly, honestly, I'm kind of upset about the reveal that, that the Dollmaker's Island is in the middle of this freaking ocean because... It, there was this sense that she is preparing to make her way back to to Gotham to take down her nemesis once and for all and reestablish herself taking the power back that she that she sacrificed um, and yet so now she she wakes up she's got new groove new glass eyeball and she insists that <laughs> this is all basically for her a very elaborate job interview. She decides to ask for a management position with this um, this dude. And I don't really know what I think about the uh, this version of the doll maker as a villain. The whole woman's arm boobs on the old office director guy thing. I don't. That that was just some weird freaking CGI. Like it it looked like I I'm really not sure what I saw, but visually it was just a little too a little too out there for me. 
personally. Um, so, of course, she returns to the basement. She's trying to prove her worth in body parts to the doll maker, such that she may serve as his right-hand woman, and in so doing, you know, reestablish herself in in this world order, <laughs> or whatever it is she's scheming at this point. But so she still tries to harp on the whole we're family, right? And you know, she told everyone that not all of them are going to make it out alive, and that some people must be sacrificed in order for her, and her promise is still kept, and and all this stuff. But how long is that really going to hold up? But then again, what exactly is any kind of revolution in this place going to look like? I mean, it definitely makes sense now how the doll maker is able to kind of keep this regi this regime that he has, and the fact that Mooney was originally attacked on her, her seafaring vessel and then ended up here. There's a lot more that makes sense now, and I don't really know why I was thinking that we're back in the Gotham area, but it definitely seemed like she was getting much closer to making to making a break for it and ultimately going back to Gotham to have a showdown with the Penguin or what have you. Um, so I thought that was going to happen by the end of the season, but I don't even know anymore. And now I don't think that we're going to get a finale for the show until the end of April or beginning of May. It feels like the show has been going for like a year. I'm just saying, I'm having a really hard time keeping track of, of everything in my mind. I mean, it helps to already kind of be familiar with some of the characters, but... So that's the thing. So she's not nearly as close to home as perhaps she thought she was, and I think she's beginning to sense that perhaps, well, in some respects she's a little bit out of her depths, but in others she is going to be Fish Mooney and adapt and do whatever the crap she wants in her bathrobe and head towel. Like, I don't even know. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of dissonance and strangeness about what's happening with her, but I've just kind of come to accept that as the Fish Mooney territory. Anyways, going back to the the unfoldings in Gotham, Gordon surely enough realizes that once again he must enlist the assistance of his number one fan, Mr. Cobblepot, giving him at last something to do besides sit and be an alcoholic in his failing bar. <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, Gordon, Penguin, and Bullock go on a, a little ride together to go pry into the, the dark and seedy affairs of Commissioner Loeb. Um, so they, they find themselves at this sort of rural ranch eating, you know, drinking tea and they're going to get cheesecake made with sour cream that tastes like Sunday morning and then get hosed down with some bullets along the way. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I think M was Marge the name of the, the woman, uh, Marge and her husband. She was a, a former Arkham nurse, of course. Um, and ultimately, what Harvey and uh, not, not Harvey Dent, Harvey Bullock and Gordon find is, well, a little bit less than, than savory. They're <laughs> They find the lovely bird lady in the attic. Uh, reminds me of so many things from, from literature and movies and shows. I mean, you know, wh whatever it reminded you of, leave it in the comments because I, I knew it was reminding me of like a thousand things at once. Um, <laughs> but so at first, at first I thought that the, um, Miriam was her name. I thought that perhaps Commissioner Loeb's wife had never really died, and it was actually his wife who was, like, deranged and kept up in an attic, and she was hidden away from the world instead of actually getting pushed down the stairs, but that was a little bit too convoluted because, as it turns out, Miriam had killed her mother, and Commissioner Loeb is trying to protect his daughter and keep her from having to go to Arkham, which I think is kind of fair, but at the same time, um, she's sitting up in her loft, breaking the necks of swallows and really seeming to get into it, so I don't know that he's really doing her any favors by not really enlisting professional help, but at the same time, she, um, I suppose it keeps her from other things, you know, I'm thinking a little bit of Norman Bates right now. <laughs> I think the two of them would have, they'd have a real heyday. You know, they could open up a business together, because Norman's freaking, you know, taxidermizing 
animals. Like he could he could take the um, the birds. Like you know, she takes out the skeleton and he could like fill it with whatever. And so they could you know like house decorations, jewelry. Mm -hmm. I could I could see it. I could see this joint operation working out pretty nicely for them. <laughs> and then of course when she gets to see the the penguins like oh I love birds <laughs> that was that was a moment that was a moment that happened <laughs> and um, so ultimately Gordon decides that he has leverage enough on Commissioner Loeb to go back and allow him to remain in power but with with a catch he's able to reacquire Harvey's file so liberating, um, exonerating Harvey in that sense, and and uh, Bullock is still trying to deal with the fallout of his own cobble pot, the things that he's had to do, you know. Um, so so the two of them are kind of dwelling in their their moral ambiguities as things go forward. And not only does does Gordon demand that Arnold Lass be given a a fair trial. But he requests that Commissioner Loeb support him in the upcoming GCPD union president election. So slowly but surely, Mr. Gordon is working his way into Loeb's seat at some point in the future. It was good to see Harvey Dent back in the picture as well in kind of a meaningful way. They didn't really have to like reintroduce him in some big extravagant way. It just kind of made sense that he was involved in all of this. But I just have to say, between between Harvey Dent and Saul Goodman, who do you think would come out on top? That is that is a question that I'm curious about. Also, we did get to see a little bit of a, a romantic tragedy unfold with Enigma, such has been the way of his his life of late. Um, Miss Kringle certainly has a very particular choice in in men. You know, she likes the dudes in uniform and. Uh, Apparently not so much the guys in, in the lab coats, but at the same time, it makes you really sad because, like, and you know, for for all his idiosyncrasies and, and strangeness, he's, he's really got a good little heart in there that is slowly but surely being eroded by, <laughs> by his, his impending villainy. But this new guy that Miss Kringle's with, he is a teller of riddles. Riddler, rid, whoop, whoop, riddles as well, <laughs> which is not going to be sitting so pretty with Nigma himself because that is his main jam. So there can be only one in this vicinity, and now you have been singled out by the Riddler himself. So best of luck to you, new uh, beau of Miss Kringle. But something tells me that, like the clock that you made a riddle about, your um your mortal clock, the clock of your mortality, is ticking, ticking away. So anyways, it was really good to see the penguin uh, back in all of his, his wicked insanity. He's kind of just been sitting on his hands in the bar for a while and, and now um, perhaps he's got a bit more purpose and, and resolve and he's getting back into the strategy and the game. Um, it was, yeah, just as a whole, a much more enjoyable episode. I, I was really digging it. Um, good atmosphere, lots, lots of fascinating moments. Again, the weirdness felt fitting for the show. I like the, the overall focus on, again, dealing with the corruption and the way that, that Gordon is, is working the system now. And he, he recognizes that some of the choices that he has to make fundamentally go against everything that he believes in. And the question, the question about him is, is this, the choices that he made in this episode are these, the beginning of his cleaning up the department and rising into, to power and, you know, donning a new era of justice and moral uprightness in the GCPD, or is this the beginning of another path entirely? But all I know is that there is no sight, no hair or hind of Barbara, and so... I'm in a good mood. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's making me feel real good. There's a few faces that we didn't really get to see this week, but as you know, they'll be back. So 
five weeks apparently until we're back doing these reviews um i want to thank you guys so much for watching and um enjoying the insanity with me it's really been a pleasure um stick around for bates motel reviews and better call saul and of course the walking dead as well and then we're also going to have game of thrones on the horizon too so we shall not be bored, children. Not for a freaking second. So you guys take care of yourselves. Anything that I forgot to discuss, please take it below in the comments and I'd be happy to duke it out with you guys down there. So you guys take care. And as always, I will be back before you know it.